librarians should get out of the business of trying to define what books are. It's like trying to define love or what light is or what sky means. There's always that one moment in a symphony where the music swells and you feel it in your body. But there's always a few things that you just feel like you almost have ownership of because it moves you so much. Well, my name is Sandra Krupa, and I'm the rare book and book arts curator. We have about 250,000 printed books here, and I'm responsible for about 155,000 of them. So a major part of my job here is to collect artist books. Uh, um, her honeymoon with her second husband, and each panel is um, a place where they are and reflects the kind of food that they were eating. And it's a one of a kind, so it's the only one in the world. The thing about artist books is it presents art, but it also presents narrative. Most of them have stories involved in them. It's a way to pair language and vision and structure and image and sometimes sound. You as the reader get to determine how fast you go through it. You get to pick where you start and where you end. When you have a book like that that you can go to and you can look at and you can see that other people have felt the way you feel inside. There's some sense of I don't know, belonging, kinship. And I think that's what artist books do that, um, a good novel does it too. My father was in the army and we traveled around a lot, moved al almost every year. I learned very early on that I shouldn't make close friendships with people because they would just go away. For me, books just became where I lived. I started um, on campus as a creative writing major when I was 17. I graduated uh, with a BA in creative writing. and I needed a job because I needed to get $300 so that my boyfriend and I could move to San Francisco and be hippies. I was lucky enough to be hired by Bob Monroe and he mentored me in a way that just changed my life. Someone described the place as a game preserve for intellectuals, and I've never figured out why anybody would want to leave, and I haven't. As of next June, I will have had my job 50 years. One of the best artist books ever made, in my opinion, by Matthew Geller. He was a photographer. It's in the 60s, and it was a $10 book. Matt is about, I don't know, 22 or something, and his girlfriend's 21, and she gets sick. It turns out she has leukemia. You have a page-by-page, day-by-day lesson of what it's like to die in the hospital. And she dies at the end, and, there's a, and it's all in black and white, and there's a photograph of her dead in bed. I've learned more about death from that book in a positive way and what's important. I, I don't believe in burials because I think it's too wasteful. I could have somebody take my ashes up to the mountains because I used to do a lot of backpacking and loved it and I wouldn't mind being up there. But I decided I was going to give my ashes to a bunch of book artists and they're gonna make me into books. For me, the ashes is, it's a way to sum up how we go back to the earth and you can get sprinkled somewhere or you can get made into something. And I like the idea of getting made into something.